we've got the results from WHO where it looks like they're saying it's a 4.3 percent mortality rate. That has a lot of people on edge. What, what do you think is actually happening worldwide and what do you think is happening here in the United States right now? Well, this, this virus still seems to be on the upswing both in the United States and worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would sound a note of slight caution about the mortality figures. I think the figure he cited was 3.4 yesterday. The challenge with that is we don't really know the denominator on that yet, so we have a better uh, idea of how many people have died than how many total, total cases there are. Uh, in general, with these kind of outbreaks, you do see some decline over time as we get a better picture of cases. I think the most concerning thing right now in the United States is we now have cases in multiple metro areas. We've got cases in greater Seattle, the Bay Area, uh, L.A., New York City, and a, a number of other states as well. And we still don't have anywhere near full visibility on total cases in the U.S. because of the testing shortfalls. So uh, what we're seeing so far in terms of official case numbers in the U.S. is probably just the tip of the iceberg. At the same time, we, we haven't really seen travel restrictions in the United States like we saw in China when they first started at least reporting the problems that were there. They, they shut down the entire province the, and, and all the areas around that. We're, we're not going to see those similar sorts of shutdowns here because of civil liberties here, correct? I, I don't think the U.S. could or, frankly, would want to do <clears throat> exactly what China did. We are beginning to see in Seattle uh, in, it's new what is called social distancing measures, which is basically trying to keep people uh, from interacting in higher risk ways. Um, so that's things like uh, canceling gatherings, advising people to avoid transit. Uh, Microsoft has just advised most of its personnel in the Seattle area and the Bay Area to work from home for the next three weeks. So I think we are in for more of that. We are, are now looking at what China did, though, and saying because they were so extreme in that shutdown, it probably kept it from getting around the globe faster. That It bought us a few weeks, at least, to try and prepare for some of those issues. If the United States is not going to do those measures, what, what does that mean? Does it mean inevitably it's going to spread here in the United States? Well, I think U.S. spread is, is inevitable. Um, the question is how far, how fast. And can we keep that spread to a manageable rate so that it doesn't overload U.S. hospitals? I think that's really, that's really the game in the U.S. going forward. Um, you know, the challenge right now is we don't really know yet how best to apply the lessons from China to the U.S. context. Uh, China took a sledgehammer approach to this. We've seen a different model in, uh, in Hong Kong and in Singapore where they've taken more of a, a scalpel approach, more fine-grained, more targeted, and it has proved effective there. Those are, of course, both very small uh, city-states, in effect. Um, mm -hmm. So the U.S. approach is probably going to be somewhere in the middle. I think the biggest concern right now is we're still not hearing any sort of clear plan from the federal government for what they expect that to look like. And yeah. Secretary Azar yesterday was still claiming incredibly that he thinks there are only 100 cases in this country. Well, that was the point that Dr. Scott Gottlieb, the former FDA commissioner, made with us yesterday, that this is kind of being left up to the local authorities. His point was that the New York state authorities were being much more proactive than the authorities out in Seattle, the Washington state authorities at that point. So if this is piecemeal, what, what happens? Piecemeal is a real problem. We want to have a consistent approach. You don't want to have, you, you don't want to have you know, some points in your armor that are stronger and others that are weaker. And that's, that's what we appear to be heading towards right now. Um, you know, I worked on the Ebola response back in 2014, and <clears throat> we, we saw at the, at the outset of that, we in the federal government left a vacuum in terms of sufficient guidance for the states, and we began to see on things like travel measures, states began to freelance and do their own thing. Um, the, the government then stepped in, provided a guidance on what to do with travelers, and the states then uh, got on board with that, and we had a consistent national approach. We have not seen that yet from the federal government on this emergency, despite the fact that it is posing far greater threats to the homeland than Ebola ever did. When you say that at this point our, our goal would be to try and keep the cases to a level that the U.S. hospital and healthcare system can handle, what, what is that level? Boy, it's, it's not a very high level. Uh, a couple of years ago, during a particularly bad flu season, U.S. hospitals were, uh, some U.S. hospitals that were hard hit were treating people on gurneys and hallways and setting up surge tents outside their buildings just to keep up with the, the caseload from flu. We are still in high flu season right now. So there is not a lot of spare bandwidth within the U.S. hospital system. And you know, we're already hearing from Seattle that just with the... Um, you know, the about 40 to 50 cases that have been identified in Washington state, that already is putting enormous strain on the health system there. You can imagine what would happen if we began to see numbers more like what's happening in Italy or Iran.